James Holder for iPhone TV in association with Matt Jim Marbao with me. I've got the Leeds Warrior, Josh Warrington. We are back in Leeds. How are you, mate? Back in Leeds. Good to see you, James, Good as always. Good to see you. Yeah. Last time I saw you was after the Amagasi fight. Yeah, yeah. Tough, it's tough night of work, that. Tough Give him night, his, yeah. doing good fight, Remick, I see. I know, we're sulking a bit after one, I you know. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm always very critical of my uh, performances and I always want to bring my very best out. And um, I went to sleep a little bit in that fight and, you know, lost a couple of rounds in, in mid fight. And, um, you know, I, I, I finished stronger, but I just, I was disappointed that I fell asleep. But it's lessons learned. And mm -hmm. when I watched it back, I was like, it wasn't too bad as I made out it to be. But, um, you know, it's one of the things I always want to be perfect, I always want to better myself and I can do a lot better and uh, it was a good night of learning. Before we go any further, I want to talk a little bit about Patrick Highland. He, he's here to fight, so I want to give him the respect as an opponent before we sort of move on. What, what do you know about Patrick? How, how much do you know about him? I mean, his name's been mentioned uh, for a while now. Um, you know, been talks of probably fighting for last year or so. But I think before Bunknell, there were talks of fighting Patrick. He's a very, very good fighter. Um, He's tough as a come, he's got a very good knockout ratio. And I'm in for another hard night, you know. I, I wasn't expecting to be fighting. I, I thought we were going to be going somewhere like Berlin or, or America for a, for a bit of a tick home fight while I get everything sorted out with a wedding and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, there's all these guys need to fight. And, and Leeds is a big arena, so let's go back to Leeds. And Josh, you're headlining it. And, you know, it turns out it's someone like Patrick who's a dangerous fighter, and I'm risking a lot here. But, Hey, oh, it's how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> Patrick said he, he's more than willing to sit in the pocket with you and slug it out. Have a real fans, fans, fans' favourite fight, if yeah. you like. So it must be nice from your point of view to know that someone's going to come and stand with you and have a crack. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a bit of footage with him. He, he likes to come and fight. Um, he, like I say, he's got a good knockout ratio, so he's got a bit of a dig behind him. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of scares me a little bit, but uh, that's what you need. You need that little bit of fear factor. Um, well, you can see, I've got a little bit of a bruise on one of the sides, so I've been toughening myself up, head butting walls and that, getting ready for them big punches. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's going to be a good fight, it's going to be exciting for fans. And not just me and, not just me and Patrick, the whole show is a, is a, is a brilliant show. Um, for a while now, people have been saying, listen, Ed, come on, bring, bring a decent undercard to Leeds. And I can see where they come in, there's a lot of boxing fans who spend their hard earned money coming out and um, you know wanting to see a good undercard there. They're from five o'clock when doors are open. So the, the treat to a, a real good show here. What did you make of him against Gary Russell Jr? Big, big step up for him, big moment. What, what do you, how do you assess his performance? That I moment? mean, Gary Russell, amazing fighter, isn't he? I mean, we're in a division where you've got a couple of the pound for pound top ten in featherweight division. <laughs> you know, you've got likes of uh, Lomachenko. I mean, no, he's, he's just moved up, but him a featherweight champ, Gary Russell Jr. a featherweight champ. It's just one of them things, and there's no shame losing to like the very best. Um, you know, like Gary Russell, in, we all know that he's elite. I mean, you've got world champions. I'll, I'll say, like, Lee Sobby, for instance, is a world champion. Gary Russell is elite. You know, special talents don't come around that often, but, you know, in, in our division, and uh, it's one of them things. But you can't fault Patrick. He went over there, he took the fight. He looks like he'd set started off well, but, you know, the elite class came out, and the speed really told in that fight. I want to talk to you a little bit about Lee Selby now. You obviously mentioned his name a little bit there. Is it frustrating for you that we're not here for Josh Warren v Lee, or Lee Selby v Josh Warren? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, uh, you know, I want the fight as, as much as anyone else. And, you know, for all them people out there who were saying, oh, the fact, you can, the fact you're getting married, yeah, I'm still getting married. And, you know, when the fight got offered, the fight, it was either this, you fight, do you want to fight early? Or do you want to fight later in the year? And you fight later in the year because when you're fighting for the world title, there's just a little bit more of what's needed from you. Um, you, have a little, you do a little bit more media work, you do a little bit more interviews, you sell a few more tickets, and you just need to be fully focused for that two, three month building up to it. I mean, we, we got the fight offered of like 10 weeks to go, or something like that, and most fighters, when they fight for the first world title, they normally fight for five, six months build up. You know, we should, we'd have been straight back into it, straight after the Amagasa fight. Um, and, you know, it would have worked better for me, get me, you know, probably have a tick over, go away from the wedding, and then come back and be fully fresh, fully focused on fighting for that world title. But obviously, while we were saving him to negotiate for later in the year, he takes to social media, and even his manager took to social media, gets, you know, putting up posts. Some of them were quite funny, actually. You know, with a picture of me and Ed in a wedding dress and him in a, <laughs> in a suit, which were, were quite funny, but it's like, 
come on man, you do stuff like that and I'm not going to jump to your bait just because you're really desperate for it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm honest with you, it could have just, it could have, uh, you know, taken the fight easily and then I wanted to say somewhere up there to be honest with you I didn't want to ask get it off your chest get everything no, you got could, this, is, this, is, this is what it could have been it could have been one of them things with his little moustache there and it could have easily gone like this hey Chris that's his manager let's go to Leeds let's go fight Josh Warrington I can tell him to Leeds fans it'll be a big payday and I've got the game plan right here but you know he didn't want to do that did he so uh, yeah. We know we're here fighting Patrick Island. Sorry for me embarrassing Welsh accent there, but that's best I can. I thought it was Indian. You've done alright. You've done alright. It wasn't too bad. I thought yeah, you was an yeah, Indian. Sorry. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things. And he's saying that the ship sailed. How is the ship sailed when the ship's got nowhere to go to? You know, he's, he, he keeps talking. He's not fighting now. He should be, def you know, fighting around this time now. He's not fighting. Do you um, think you're the biggest? domestic fight of defence that he could have? 100%, 100%. I mean, you know, it'd be a big payday for us both. Do you think I want to miss out on a big payday? You know, mm -hmm. living mortgage free for the rest of your life is, is something that you, you know, we all come into boxing to, to try to do as best. You all want to win belts and stuff, but you also want to get paid for what you do, you know, take a lot of punches to head. You sacrifice a lot throughout your life and, and you undo it. Do you think I want to miss out on an opportunity like that? Not all, but it's talking like, oh, you missed the boat. Don't forget earlier in the year before all this shit came out, he did at one point say, um, oh no, I'm not, I'm not looking to fight Josh, but I'm going to go to America. And, and when he when he boxed Montiel and then when he boxed, um, uh, what's the other fella? When he got caught on his ass. You know, he's kind of changed his tune and it's like, you can't just chop and change, like it takes two to tango. You know, he keeps talking about wanting the winner of Frampton and Santa Cruz. They're not going to turn around and say, oh yeah, we'll we'll fight Lee. You know, it's got to be negotiated from there. They may want a, a steady defence or somewhere else after that. So you can't guarantee that. So he needs to realise that, you know, things aren't always going to go his way. And, you know, like I say, it takes two to tango. We've got to negotiate these things, so... Are you still, is water. the wedding still going ahead? Yeah. Are you still getting married? Listen, at, at first it was cancelled. You know, I cancelled it three times, moving it about, and I've, I've spent a lot of money on the, on the wedding. And it was one of them things where, for a few years, we wanted to get this date. And when we booked the date, we thought oh, we'll be quiet around that time. The sell the fight will, will have happened before then, and we'll have a steady build up to it. But it was just one of the things, and you know, you put, I put a lot on hold for the, for the boxing um, and, and that's what you do it's my I'm not mourning about it because I chose this lifestyle and I chose this path and it's been very rewarding but you know some things you know, can't wait and we wanted to get wanted to get wedded in that day and like I say I did cancel it to try and sort some out but instead of coming back and negotiating things you know like I say they all took to social, social media and said that I've missed the boat so you know, it kind of just fell through from there so it's, I carried on getting wedded and I'm still getting married and Hopefully, I'm not going to have a stag do this time. Um, well, it's the only time, isn't it? So I'm not, I'm not going to get a stag do. So hopefully, that Patrick's a, is a respectful fighter. I'm hoping that uh, whatever the fight goes, they'll come out and piss with us after. I don't think you'll have to ask him twice. To no, be no, I just said to him up there when we're going into it, I said, Are you going to come out for a drink after? He said, Guinness. It's all right, let's go do it. <laughs> so. If you come through this and it's the way you want to be with flying colours, we'll. Will you ask Eddie to, to, to try and sort out the Selby fight? Is it, it can it happen? What what, what, what happen? Going I mean, here? like I say, um, you know, we when Amaga after we boxed Amagasa, there were talks of going to Ellen Road. Leeds United or whatever couldn't do it around that time, so that fell through. The plan between me and Steve and, and, and his team then were we're gonna have to make yourself mandatory, put yourself in number one position. So that would have been throughout this year working to get in that position. Um, and by end of the year, if we would have won something like an IBF international title, something like that, put ourselves in the number one manager spot, then we could have signed the fight then, had a nice build up for next year at Ellen Road. But like I say, he's come out saying it's, it's dead in water and this and over and talking a lot of shit. I don't want any other fight after I've, after I've, you know, after this one. If I get through this one, like I said, I'm not looking over it, if I get through this one, come to Bill. I want the, that fight battle, just, just any fight, just any world title, I'm ready to fight for a world title now. Alright, well listen, I appreciate you clearing up a little bit Sorry for going on going a bit on. There, No, James. that's alright. You know, I, I sound like a bit of a, I'm not one of I can imagine it's been stuff. quite frustrating for yourself, because yeah, you, you want to fight for a yeah, world of course, title now. of course, and you know, I'm not one to, 
you know, spend my day behind a keyboard typing it up on social media because you can't really get your point across like you can with words in first person. Again, I would have happily said it up there, but I didn't want to talk about it, so I should have taken the Conor McGregor style, should I, and just ripped into just him. Got me. Yeah, yeah, but uh, like, full of attention on Padjo, he's, he's a serious guy, he's, it's going to be a tough fight, so I'm training very hard for it. Yeah, on that note, thank you very much for the TV. We look forward to catching you in the build up. Thank you, sir. Cheers, Joe.